Hello and welcome to Inside Japan. We're trying this new thing where we actually tell you the news that's going on inside Japan and just some stories that I personally found interesting. So we're calling this segment What's Going On Inside Japan. Okay, so Marco, what's going on? Okay, so we talked about this story before, once before, well, just between us, not really with the audience, but there's a story about, I think they labeled it the best way, a touching tale of a cat, a car, and compassion. Okay. Okay, so... Sounds good. So what happened? So this ma- there's this man, he's a car lover and a cat lover. He loves his cat a lot. And what ended up happening was his cat got sick and he couldn't really afford the surgery. Okay. And so... If you think about your dog, would you sell one of your passions to save your dog? Uh, I don't know. I mean, that's, that's, that's the thing. You know, we have insurance, but you can never really know. So that's definitely a tough choice. But yeah. uh, sure, something living over a car seems yeah. like a good choice. And so what, this is what the man did. He, he actually tried to sell it for twice the amount that it's worth. Okay. And a buyer noticed that, hey, this is a little overpriced, but it wasn't. It's still in good condition, and the car is actually a Toyota Supra. So, the guy, like the buyer, was like, "Uh, why are you selling this car?" He's like, "I need, I need to pay for my cat's surgery." And in the article, it was saying how much this guy loved his car. He was like, "I never thought about selling my car." Mm. But the car, the car, the cat comes before the car. Sure. And so the buyer actually had some compassion. Okay. Hence the title: a cat, a car, and compassion. So he agreed <laughs> to buy the car at twice its actual value. Yes and no. So he agreed to buy the car. Yes. At the same price. Actually, the. I we didn't talk about this before, but the guy, the cat owner, actually wanted he he felt like kind of bad for charging him so much, so mm-hmm. he actually kind of tried to give him a discount, and the guy refused the discount. Well, that's interesting. <laughs> and so he heard the guy's story about his cat, and he was really he, you know, he decided to buy the car. However, he's going to restore it. Okay. Like fix anything that's wrong with it. There's not, there aren't any major things wrong with the car, mm-hmm. but he just wanted to make sure it was kept in good condition, fix anything that needs to be fixed, and then he's gonna sell it back to him at the price that he bought it. Okay, so if the original owner wants to buy it back, he can do it, and the car will be better than the shape it was he sold it at. Yes. Has he actually bought it back? Do we have... Well, he... They're just talking about, like, selling it right now. So it's... Okay. So I believe he is in the process of selling it to the buyer. Fresh off the presses. So, yeah. So right now it's still going on. So it might be it might be a while before he could buy the car back, I guess. But it'll be waiting for him and nicer than ever. Yes. And the buyer also said that... Uh, since they live really close to each other, he can, the seller can actually come visit and drive the car if he wants to. And so I thought that was really cool. Sure. I mean, that's super, super considerate and uh, kind of him to offer to do that. It's, yeah. uh, it's a good story to start with. I think so too. <laughs> I'm glad that you agree. <laughs> Okay, well, that was our first What's Going On Inside Japan story. Ignoring story number two, what you got for us? So this one is actually a little more sad. It's actually bad news. Bad news. Yes, so I don't know, do you know who Kentaro Miyura is? Does not ring a bell. Have you ever heard the manga called Berserk? I know the name. I know there's a guy with a big sword. So, yeah, sadly, the the creator of that has passed away. 
Okay. So, yeah, it's more of a sad story, just something I feel like it is a big deal, at least to some people that I know. And so I feel weird not mentioning something like this. Um, you know, I, a couple years or eight years ago, the creator of Ampaman passed away, but he was in his 90s, kind of an older guy. Is this guy young, old? 54. So 54, for okay. For Japan, that's pretty young. That's a pretty young age to die, especially sure. in Japan. So, yeah, it was, it's just, you know, some sad news that I feel like it is something that's going on in Japan that, uh, Berserk was like actually uh, a really good. I didn't read everything. I just had I just read part of it, and so the part that I saw was really interesting. It was a really dark story, and f from what I hear, the creator wasn't dark at all. Really, he was the opposite of what the type of story he made, and so it was really interesting that he wrote that type of story. But yeah, it was a really dark story as far as as far as I read, and I'm pretty sure it got darker as it went along. Okay, well, yeah, so, yeah. that's that's sad to hear. Yeah. So yeah, um, I know that's like a sad note, <laughs> especially for our first show, but I, yeah, like I said, I think it's something worth bringing up. Okay. Well, that was a bit of a bummer. You got you got. A third story for us? Well, keep in line with anime. Anime, okay. I'm sure you know Attack on Titan. Once again, I know the <laughs> name. I've seen lots of artwork of people that look kind of kind of scary, really big. So, here in Japan, they teamed up, like, pretty much the creators. I'm not sure if the creators the owners of it, I guess. Okay. They're pretty much having this, they're selling, okay, um, there's a character called Levi. Okay. He is really strong, He can. he's really skilled and everything. Mm. However, he has this one thing where he is really strict about cleaning. Okay, that's a good thing. So, it made sense, I guess, in this case, to attach his voice to... A vacuum robot. <laughs> okay, this is kind of like, like a Roomba? Exactly, yeah. So it communicates with you. It says 104 different things. So it is very vocal. <laughs> and is this for the older Japanese citizen who needs some companionship as well as some household cleaning? Uh. So it's just somebody who enjoys Attack on Titan, enjoys Levi. For example, one of the things, I guess it's translated right here. Like, commencing cleaning of the area. I will stake my life on wiping out every speck of dust from this, bad word, room. <laughs> okay, so now this is for sale in the U.S., or is it... That's a translation. It's reading Japanese. I believe it is a translation. It's in Japanese because okay. it is priced at. Do you want to guess the price? Um, I'm going to say it's a thousand dollars. Jumanen. So it is actually. Well, not a thousand dollars. If you were to convert it into U.S. money, it would actually be six hundred seventy-four dollars. Okay. So that's still. Pretty pricey. No, 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 no. So yes. Well, um, take away two hundred yen, but <laughs> uh, a Roomba. You know, I've heard they're pretty expensive, five or six hundred bucks. So I guess it's on par. And if you get your favorite character, that that is definitely for somebody. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, I was like, I personally before I saw the price, I was actually considering getting it but then i saw the price i'm like no i think i'm good i think i'm good <laughs> okay um you know i uh at work i you know saw a cleaning robot and the idea of like a little robot sounds cool but it's a little robot vacuum 
and like vacuum cleaners are noisy. <laughs> yes. So, um, you know, maybe if you can set it on a timer so it's cleaning while you're out, because being in a room with a noisy robot is not so fun. Mm. Yeah, I agree. Okay. Uh, you want to roll into one more story? Uh, sure. Okay, so I think this, I have, yeah, I have, I'm going to choose this story right here. Okay, so if those are watching, don't know what we do for a living, we are actually English teachers. And so I think this kind of, it's pretty much what we do, however, with a twist. Okay. It's online. Well, it can be done online. Right now it's being done online because of COVID. Hmm. Esports English lessons. Okay. For children. So teach them how to communicate. Usually tell them how to give instructions, take instructions. So that way, if they're playing with somebody, they can communicate very well. Sure. I, you know, I, I used to play Overwatch, and a lot of the best players were from Korean teams. And those players moving to the U.S., the language could be a, a bit of a barrier for some. So, okay, I guess those kids better be pretty serious. Yeah, so it's for esports. So if you want to try to get better at it, and sorry, I'm um, what they're thinking of doing is they're actually getting a building. Okay. In Tokyo, to actually, you can go there physically as soon as the. As soon as you know everything calms down with COVID, mm. and so you could actually go there in person, have a lesson, have somebody teach you how to communicate in English, while gaming, and also so the teachers, they are ones who know how to play the game, and know both English and Japanese, mm. so they can communicate very fluently, and so they can make sure the kids know everything that they need to learn. So. Yeah, when I was a kid, esports wasn't exactly a, a viable career path. But uh, yeah, they did have tournaments back then, but not really what they'd have now. Sure, I mean, it, you really, if you're good enough, you can you can live doing it. Yeah, and so pretty much, uh, you can do these classes online, and um, they're at first they're mainly geared towards actually elementary school students. Okay. But I'm pretty sure as time passes, you can get junior high schools, uh, junior high students and high school students, and maybe even some adults. Hmm. Some people who are very interested in gaming. So, uh, yeah, this is... The building is going to be the first eSports training area in Japan. I'm just going to hazard a guess that these lessons will not be cheap. They're actually, um, if I re read this correctly and remember correctly, it's about 8,000 yen per week. Oh, sorry, a month. 8,000 yen a month? 8,800 yen a month, I should say. For multiple lessons? For weekly lessons. At least four lessons, so 2,000 yen a pop. Yeah, and so when they're opening up, um, when they open up after COVID, mm -hmm. what they're going to do is they're actually going to take walk-ins sometimes. Okay. So I thought that was really interesting. Hmm. Um, I used to read a video game site called Kotaku, and one of the editors, um, Brian, he he worked teaching English, and at one point he would be set up in like a shopping mall and just like, hey, five dollars, five minutes, many English lessons and just strangers would come up to you and talk, <laughs> sit down in a food court for five minutes. Hmm. Um, kind of a, a surreal job, but it, it's interesting how people can make English a business here in Japan. Yeah. So this is going to be our last story of the evening. We talked about a few interesting things so far. We talked about you know, compassion, we talked about technology, death, amongst other things. This time, it's kind of more like irony. Irony? Yes. So, a 
police chief in Saitama. So if, for those who don't know, Saitama is just below Tochigi Prefecture where we are, and then below that is Tokyo. Right. So it's in between us and Tokyo. So it's a, the suburb just north of Tokyo. A lot of housing, suburban developments. So a police chief was arrested. Okay, what did he do? Something really bad? Uh, he stole. Stealing is not good. Okay. Yeah. The thing is, what he stole is what made this story interesting. Okay, gold bars? Toilet paper. Toilet paper. Not exactly what I was expecting, okay. <laughs> All right. See, I, I had a feeling you'd be surprised by this story. Mm. So... What end up happening, he's a, he's 60 years, 60 years old. He, he got drunk, okay. really drunk. I have seen some drunk people here in Japan, okay. So he was outside of a convenience store mm -hmm. and he needed to use the restroom. While he was in the restroom, he noticed there was extra toilet paper and he was afraid that on the train ride home, he would make a mess. Okay. So he decided, hey, there's some extra toilet paper here. Mm. Let me just take some of that with me. Okay. And so I don't make a mess, pretty much. Sure. But it's not his toilet paper. It's the convenience store's toilet paper. And somebody saw him and was like, uh, this guy's stealing your toilet paper. <laughs> Turns out, yes, this guy is a chief of police in Saitama. That's not good. Okay. So I thought it was a really interesting story. I'm not one to actually laugh at people's misfortunes, but mm. personally, I thought it was a really interesting story because you do have something you wouldn't hear every day. Yeah, I, I have seen rolls of toilet paper and on the side of it, they, they write the name of the store and they have a sign. This is ours, not yours. So... <sighs> Okay. Sorry, I'm laughing because I thought it was really interesting. Mm. I, you know, just trying to throw you through that loop of, wait, it's a police chief. It's nearby. What did he steal? Toilet paper. Toilet paper. Toilet paper. So what ended up happening to him is uh, he has a suspension, but since he's already 60, he decided to take an early retirement. Okay, bow out gracefully. Mm, as gracefully as he can with toilet paper. <laughs> because he was being called a few different names. The chief of toilet paper. Oh. And so on. Okay. <laughs> sure. Okay. So, I thought that was a really interesting story. I hope you liked that story and the other stories that we shared before. So, hopefully you could come back again and enjoy other stories with us. And who knows, Derek might bring some stories next time. You never know. Never know. Never know. <laughs> All right. I'll see you next time. Bye. Goodbye.